And joining us now for our Your Health segment is Dr. Nada Hanner. Hanna, Associate Professor of Surgery at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. Dr. Hanna, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks, Jeff, for having me. Appreciate it. We know that March is Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. Many people are aware, but they may not be aware of just how many cases, 100,000 a year. Uh, for colorectal cancer, uh, for 2012, it's estimated about 143,000, of which about 102 colon cancer, and the rest is uh, rectal cancer. Yes. One of, one of the unique features is that uh, this disease can be caught very early. It can be treated. Let's talk about how, in, in your practice as a, as a surgeon, when, when patients come to you with this disease, I suppose they can come in different stages. Correct. You'd much prefer to see them at an early stage. We much see it before it even turns into cancer. And actually, colon cancer is a preventable disease uh, with colonoscopy. And I think that's one of the important messages we need to give to the audience about the importance of a screening colonoscopy, which can save life. How does that happen? Uh, well, it's recommended for average risk person. Uh, every man and woman in the United States should have the screening colonoscopy at starting at age 50 if you're an average risk. Now, if you're a high risk and if you have family history, some other disease like inflammatory bowel disease, the recommendation is a little bit different, but everybody should have um, the colonoscopy starting at age 50 because it can diagnose uh, cancer in the, ver in the precancerous stage, which is a polyp, which when excised and removed, that so, prevents cancer. So, Doctor, this is a, a picture, a graphic uh, showing what the colon or large intestine, same thing, Yes. what that looks like and roughly where the scope goes, and it shows the difference between something called a sigmoidoscopy, which doesn't go terribly far up, Right. And a colonoscopy that, that takes, a, takes a full look. Correct. A flexible sigmoidoscopy just looks at the left colon. Uh, the full colonoscopy, which is the preferred method of screening, uh, evaluate the whole colon. And it's not only is it diagnostic, but also therapeutic. So if we find a polyp, which is abnormal growth, which is usually in the early benign stage, it can be excised and removed, and that actually prevent progression to cancer. And, and that has been proven to cut colon cancer mortality by about a third, 33% reduction in mortality by just uh, doing screening colonoscopy. Do, do all of the cancers originate as polyps? Do all polyps eventually turn into cancer? Uh, it depends on the histology of the polyp, but usually for colon cancer, the sequence is from normal lining mucosa to polyp to cancer. And that's one of the advantage of, of doing the screening colonoscopy is catching the polyp, which is the pre-malignant, which is a benign stage, which is a curable uh, condition. And that prevents actually development of cancer. Unfortunately, if you look at the statistics in the United States, it's only about 55% uh, of all the population above the age of 50 get a screening colonoscopy. So uh, there's a lot of work that we can do. They knock you out for that, right? So pain isn't really an issue? No, it's a, you, you get IV sedation, so you really don't remember much uh, about it. Uh, most patients will tell you that they really don't remember anything at all. Just once you go into the room, they are out in the recovery room, they're awake. What, what you hear from people, though, is that they do remember something called the PrEP. Yeah, that's the well, What is that? Uh, you know, to be able to visualize the inside of the colon, we obviously have to clean the colon. And so a bowel PrEP is required to really cleanse the colon, and that's really what most people uh, really complain about. You know, there's also about, uh, people hear about virtual colonoscopy, which is more in the news lately, which is a very effective uh, screening, but still a patient would require the uh, same bowel prep. You gotta clean the colon so you can really see the polyp on there, small, early, so you can really remove them and prevent the cancer. So w when would a virtual colonoscopy be a good alternative to a full physical colonoscopy? Well, certainly if you don't want to have a full colonoscopy, it's better to have a virtual colonoscopy than having nothing at all. And there are some patients who we cannot do with a flexible sigmoidoscopy or a full colonoscopy for either anatomical or technical reason. Uh, patient who had inflammatory bowel disease, sometimes it's not easy to do the colonoscopy. Either way, you have to have a colonoscopy, whether it's the regular colonoscopy or virtual colonoscopy, it's a good start. Everybody should have it starting at age 50. It does prevent colon cancer, it decreases mortality. How frequently do people need the procedure after that? Uh, if for average risk, it's uh, after you do it at age 50, then every uh, 10 years. Okay, yeah. uh, let's take a phone call. This is Jim in Carroll County. Jim, thank you for calling, go ahead. Uh, good evening, doctor. Good, good evening. Uh, my question has to do with the alternative method of colonoscopy where you have to drink this horrible stuff, movie prep, and then they, um, I think it's external radiation where they check your colon that way versus the standard colonoscopy. I've had it done both ways, and I can tell you the preparation is awful. Is it awful for both of them or one more than the other? 
The um, alternative method, the stuff you have to take, is enough to make you gag. I understand. Jim, thanks for reporting in. Appreciate it. Right. Well, doctor, what would that be? Well, he's referring to the virtual colonoscopy because virtual colonoscopy is actually it's a CAT scan. Uh, it's, a, so it's an X-ray. That's what he was referring to. Right. But nevertheless, the bowel prep is really the same. Uh, let's talk about treatment. So if uh, somebody unfortunately develops colon cancer, then they become your patient. What are the alternatives? Well, once the cancer is diagnosed, uh, let me just go even before the cancer is diagnosed. I think there's a common uh, scenario that we see that I like to, the audience to be aware of. Very frequently, we get patients who say they have some, have some rectal bleeding and they thought it's hemorrhoids. And, you know, they just ignore it. You know, six months to eight months later, they come in with a full-blown colon cancer. Uh, hemorrhoids has to be diagnosed by exclusion. If there's a rectal bleeding, you have to have a colonoscopy to exclude colon cancer. Um, once colon cancer, go ahead. Well, how do you, how, so if somebody's watching us now, they just heard Jim call in and say how horrible the PrEP is. Maybe that was particularly for the, the case of the uh, virtual colonoscopy. But if somebody's having that problem, you really want them to get checked out. How do you hit them over the head and tell them that they've got no, to do you don't, it? No, you know, yeah. it's a one-time deal. Uh, if you don't have it and you end up by having cancer, you're going to suffer for the rest of your life. So it's a one-day, you know, prep. You're going to have to just uh, tolerate it. And most people really tolerate it well. Um, and, you know, it's much better than getting treatment for cancer because that lasts <laughs> quite a bit. Well said. Uh, here's Jean in Culpeper, Virginia. Jean, thanks for the call. Go ahead. Yes, doctor, thank you for taking my question. And I'm wondering if someone like myself that's lived with an ileostomy for five years that has bloating needs to have the uh, test done with contrast dye, or can you just have the test? Jean, thanks very much. We'll get you an answer on the air. And that's probably something her doctor would need to... Correct. And the ileostomy, if she had an ileostomy, that means the colon has been removed. So, or, you know, unless there's another reason why she had an ileostomy. But uh, generally, if you don't have a colon, you don't need a colonoscopy. Um, lastly, is this run in families? Is this... Uh Yes, it can run in family. You know, uh, about 80% of all colon cancer occurs sporadic, about 15% occur in families, and about 5-10% is hereditary where you have an inherited uh, syndrome or gene uh, where you know, we know that you're going to get uh, the cancer. And familial uh, tends to be clustered in families. It's probably related to a common genetic and environmental factors. All right, Dr. Nader Hanna is Associate Professor of Surgery at the University of Mar Maryland School of Medicine. Doctor, thank you very much for being with us. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System. 